see all my, my uh, Ionian boots here, my glacial shield to get my uh, cooldown reduction there. Bringing uh, my feast down to 40 second cooldown every little bit helps and get a little more cooldown reduction by the end of the match. But uh, that's that's my initial build, getting that Glacial Shroud and Ionian Boots. Even if I'm going against AP casters, I may even do that, particularly if they have an AD jungler, because it will still help with the jungler. Uh, in some instances, if you're taking so much AP damage, you may need to go for that Negatron Cloak first instead of the Glacial Shroud. But I really like that reduced cooldowns, and I try to get that early if possible. A Teemo up there, not a bad buy. I mean, it'll reduce a little damage from the minions, so not too bad. I've got a significant advantage. Let's take a look at the creep. Uh, like, I've got 89. No one else in the game has that many. Uh, their Annie's pretty close. I've got about a 10 creep advantage. Our mid isn't doing so well with creep kills. But uh, once again, we have prevented them from uh, getting any ER kills. So that's just as good as having more creep kills in some games. All right, there, there we go, another level of feast, get a little bigger, get more points, and do more damage. I've got my full feast stack, I don't believe it, nope, there's still, the show is still at three, he got killed. So I've got a big health advantage. I can really drain down his health pretty fast, be super aggressive here. Down and there's no way he's going to out damage me. He did go for some armor and a ward. Uh, I didn't pick up a ward. I should have picked up a ward, but... Yeah, but I didn't. Now right there, he just went down to push the place the ward. You gotta pay attention to the positioning, because when they do do that, uh, it's important to uh, realize when your bush is ward, you let your jungler know. I think I told our Ud here on Ventrilo. Speaking of Ventrilo, yes, we do have a community of Ventrilo. If you ever want to play with me or anyone else from our community, uh, just hop on the Ventrilo and see who's on. Uh, it's not terribly good right now, but uh, I'm still working to convert most of my people from Sky Pulcher to uh, the Ventrilo. Alright, so uh, at this point I've gotten another kill on their uh, on their uh, Cho'Gath. New new their jungler does teleport into the Temple lane, which means, well, I don't have to worry about a jungle gank anymore. So you know what that means? I'm going to kill their jungler. He is four level behind me, level 8 at this point. Let's have a look at him down there. There we go. Uh, there, there's our Nuno. So he's got good health, and I'm a little low on health and mana. But you know what? I've got four levels on him. I got my full piece stack. I am feeling froggy. If he overextends at all, I am going for him. There we go. He walks back into it. Perfect. Get a little free damage on there with my scream. Uh, hit a mushroom there. Screw you, Teemo. Teemo, but not anti Cho'Gath because Cho'Gath just walks through mushrooms and eats you. Yes. Timo may be really good against Singed in those, but uh, Chogoth sure shows Timo who's boss. And it's Gentleman Chogoth. Nom, 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 nom. Well, that was fairly ridiculous, but, uh, you know, that's how it goes. So, this has been a pretty uh, solid look at him. There we go. Let's get a lot of damage on him. Finish him off there. Delicious, delicious jungler who should not have been laning against me. At this point in the game, if you've been doing successful as I've been doing, you're really turning into the carry of the game along with your mid and your jungler. Uh, they should all have good XP advantage at this point. Uh, you know, their mid and solo top and jungler should have good competition for that. But in this case, we've been dominating their top, so I've got two level advantage. Their jungler just hasn't been doing anything successfully, so he's fallen behind. And their Annie's gotten killed once. Notably, their, uh, their Cho'Gath went metal because I guess he's tired of fighting me. They're just gonna let me get this tower. So, once this first tower goes down, that's usually the most definite sign of the laning phase ending for solo top. Uh, either if your tower goes down or their tower goes down, uh, suddenly there's a lot more of exposed territory. If your tower goes down, uh, you're exposed to ganks from here and here. You can't extend nearly as far. So down goes the turret. Which means they're exposed to ganks from here and here. And their Cho'Gath decides to finally come over here. I got an Udyr coming, so we're going to try and pick off this Cho'Gath real quick before I can be. Uh, instead, the Udyr stays in the bush and doesn't actually engage, so uh, I missed the pop up anyways. Just let it go. I'll finish off this creep wave and go back to get some mana and uh, spend some money. 
I'm just doing off that creep wave. No big deal. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and show you my uh, mid-game build here, my core items, get my Negatron Cloak, and get that into Force of Nature to deal with Annie, who will probably be either Powerhouse, and Cho'Goth mostly does AP, I suppose. So that's another reason for that. I still have my armor from that. So I've got my uh, my Force of Nature there for that magic resistance. I'll turn this into a Frozen Heart it. eventually. And then that's my core build for my Cho'Goth. From there I go map dependent. I may get uh, some help, like a Rod of Mage. Or uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Warmog. Guardian Angel is a pretty common choice for me for that extra resistance. Uh, but yeah, once that tower's down, that's pretty much the end of the solo top phase. You can roll momentum pretty easily. No stress to get to the next tower. You've got the tower advantage. Plus, it's pretty extended and leaves you vulnerable if you overextend too far that way. So all the more reason to go around and kill people and take other towers. But that moves into the mid late game phase and is beyond the laning phase, which is the focus of this video. I hope this has been helpful to you if you ever have to play solo competition as I eat another Choga. And, uh... Just not get away. Yes. Uh, so, if you play Cho'Goth solo top, hopefully this will give you some ideas on what you need to do. Uh, I'm not the perfect player by any means, but uh, I do pretty successfully with my solo top Cho. Uh, most of my friends don't want me to play that when I'm doing anything serious. So I'm like, no, play solo top Cho. Don't play Evelyn in the jungle. What are you thinking? Play your solo top Cho, not Evelyn. Oh, but I want to play Evelyn in the jungle. Like, no, play Choga. But I want to play Choga. All right, I'll play Choga. And then I proceed to own faces. All right, so once again, this has been a quick look at uh, a solo top show here. And, uh, you know, dominating that top show to get you that mid-game advantage with Choga. Hopefully you can extend to a late game advantage. Once again, anything later is not the purpose of this video, so we're going to go ahead and cut it before the end of the match. I'll let you know what happens if you win. Uh, I continue to dominate. I think I die once. In fact, I think I die right here. But whatever. Alright, guys. This is Bill Mr. Fox. Uh, stay tuned for more League of Legends fun battle videos. I cover other positions on the team. And, uh, game aspects, that sort of thing, and other champions would use it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please subscribe or like the video or what have you. The more subscribers you get, the more likely I can release the longer than 15 minute videos. I may have had to be a little bit of to make it fit, and I'm going to certainly start stop talking now so it's not too long. Everyone have a great day, I'll see you next time.